In this section, we'll have a discussion of gout. Gout is characterized by hyperuricemia, which is increased levels of uric acid in the blood. Normal levels of uric acid in blood are 2 to 6 mg per dl. However, if the uric acid levels exceed more than 6.8 mg per dl, that results in hyperuricemia and predisposes to gout. Now, uric acid is formed as a result of purine metabolism and the metabolism of nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA results in formation of intermediates such as hypoxanthine and guanine, which are eventually converted into xanthine by enzyme xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase also converts xanthine into uric acid. Therefore, xanthine oxidase is an important enzyme in urine metabolism. Uric acid is excreted by kidney uh, in the urine and some part of uric acid is also reabsorbed. Now, hyperuricemia occurs whenever there is increased formation of uric acid or when there is decreased excretion of uric acid. So, uric acid remains in the blood and results in hyperuricemia. Now, there are certain conditions which can increase amount of DNA and RNA metabolism or hyposanthine and guanine and predisposed to hyperuricemia. Conditions such as leukemias, lymphomas, polycythemias or even use of cancer or uh, anti-cancer drugs, it results in increased DNA and RNA metabolism in the body and also increased consumption of meat results in increased metabolism of DNA and RNA which predisposes to increased uric acid production and hyperuricemia. Now, use of certain drugs such as uh, drugs such as aspirin and um, aspirin and levodopa, ethambutol or even thiazides and by increased consumption of alcohol there is decreased excretion of uric acid as they competitively inhibit the excretion of uric acid. This, these are secondary conditions which predispose to hyperuricemia. Now, gout can be divided into two types, acute gout and chronic gout. Acute gout uh, is characterized by severe inflammation of small joints of body, most common being metatarsophalangeal joint, especially first metatarsophalangeal joint. And it results in swollen, red, hot and extremely painful joint. And the treatment for this condition should be immediate and the aim of treatment is to decrease inflammation and decrease the pain. Now let us discuss the treatment of acute gout. First of all, we should know about something about the pathophysiology. Basically, there is deposition of monosodium urate crystals in joints. These monosodium urate crystals, once they get deposited in the joints, they are precipitated in synovial fluid. And these crystals are taken up by synovial cells, which cause inflammation of the joint by release of chemotactic substances such as interleukin-2 and leukotriene B4. Now, these substances cause migration of granulocytes in the joint, which try to eliminate these crystals by phagocytosing them. So, there is phagocytosis of these crystals and after phagocytosing, they cause release of certain glycoproteins, which will increase the production of lactic acid as well as production of ly certain lysosomal enzymes. These lysosomal enzymes cause destruction of the joints and decrease the increase in lactic acid results in decrease in pH of medium, which causes more precipitation of sodium monosodium urate crystals. Thus, this results in development of a vicious cycle causing destruction of joint. So for the treatment of acute gout, our first drugs that we use are NSAIDs, which are also the drug of choice in acute gout. Now, they are used to, because they decrease the inflammation and aspirin should never be used because it itself causes hyperuricemia. Usually preferred NSAID is endomethacin. If, uh, if the patient does not respond to these drugs, then we use corticosteroids and the preferred corticosteroid is prednisolone. If the patient does not respond to corticosteroids as well, then we use colchicine. Colchicine is the most effective drug for the treatment of acute gout. However, it's not the drug of choice because of various side effects of colchicine. It's not a safe drug. So, let us understand the mechanism of action of colchicine. To understand the mechanism of action, we have to take a look at that vicious cycle. Colchicine inhibits the release of chemotactic substances such as interleukin to inter leukotriene B4 and it also inhibits migration of granulocytes that is chemotaxis by inhibiting microtubules which are actually contractile proteins. It also inhibits phagocytosis by these granulocytes and the release of glycoprotein. Therefore, it is very uh, effective in preventing the development of vicious cycle in acute, in acute attack of gout. Now, side effects of colchicine, uh, since colchicine inhibits microtubules and therefore inhibits mitosis, therefore, uh, which is similar to anti-cancer drugs, uh, therefore side effects are also similar to anti-cancer drugs. These side effects include nausea, vomiting, alopecia and diarrhea because of neural stimulation in GIT and myopathies. 
and the because of these side effects it's not the drug of choice now pharmacokinetics of colchicine it's highly absorbed it has high oral absorption and it is metabolized by cytosomal enzymes cytochrome p3a4 in the liver and excreted in bile now if we use enzyme inhibitors such as rifampicin that results in toxicity of colchicine and in case of toxicity of colchicine symptoms such as nausea vomiting abdominal cramps bloody diarrhea are very common now if there is a very severe toxicity of colchicine then that results in cns depression and uh, muscle paralysis and paralysis of respiratory 